Hello guys and welcome to the channel, this is Beaver Rule. In today's video we will be talking about how to fight Willbender. The concept of how to survive them and how to go straight to kill them. I still get questions about this subject even so I made dedicated videos about it and shared multiple tips in multiple videos. You can find the link in the description. But rightfully so since it is the most used and abused overpowered class in roaming. A lot of people play it, it's easy, it delivers a victory, it's very strong in both survivability and um, kill potential. It's probably the most efficient in World vs. World, and after the next batch it will not get any weaker. It simply will be will move mostly to the power version instead of the celestial version being the most famous. In this video I'm fighting um, multiple different builds and uh, like this one is a power variant. So. Thief might see a strong comeback, but Willbender will not fall off anyway. It's still very powerful class in general. So in this video, I'll be sharing the tips from the easiest concept, like how do the fight is become scripted in a way in order for you to understand what's happening and then share or scaling from there in order to get better in how to deal with them. I will not be commenting on the first fight. I will explain everything and then we'll explain it on a, a bit easier fight that you can actually see what I'm talking about after this one. So, the advantage of Blaine Wellbender is the mobility connected with uh, both the damage and the survivability. They have multiple boon sources, multiple cleanse uh, tools, and they have a lot of mobility which work as gap closers and chase potential and also work as kiting ability combined with a uh, running away tool. So, if you're chasing them, they can kite you well or they can completely run away if they need to. If you're escaping them, they can simply gap close if you're in the fight or completely chase you if you're trying to disengage completely and that can be really really uh, bracing in a way or, or overpowering in general so how we deal with this i have explained the greatest step into surviving them in my opinion which is you, if you get caught with immobilize and you can't get out you're dead like their immobilize is probably the most dangerous thing because in those seconds they can finish you but we will start from the beginning so, in the engagement of Willbender, they will teleport to you or use a gap closer on you. They use their F1, for example, and then use Sword 2, and then use another movement skill if they need to. Like, they uh, go about the fight as much as they want, but they will always keep moving toward you with skills that it just presses a button and it will always land, it will always move toward you. They do, it's not about moving the camera or being very good with movement or melee weapons, which means you're going to have to avoid them. They're not only using them to get closer to you, they are a uh, damage setup. They're using them for damage, simply. So, if they use one teleport, use a dodge. If they use another, use another dodge. And if they use another movement, you use another dodge. In a single weapon set, normally you will always have three dodges, and then you can move to the other. So, you have two dodges and a uh, short bow three. And then you have, hopefully, two dodges while you're on staff. And you have the sigil once you change to staff sigil of energy that give you another dodge. And also you have lightning reflexes when really needed, so you have multiple dodge sources on a bit like that. If you're playing any other thing, other side than uh, my druid or even ranger at all, you can have other tools to shut down this sequence, this circle of abort and damage, abort and damage that they do. Which is something like a block, something like distort for a mesmer, whatever tool you have, or multiple even more dodges than me if you are a thief. So use that to interrupt this and only use it whenever they come coming from you. Don't waste resources. I find a lot of people do that afraid that they will bort on them while they're not borting. They're waiting for them to waste resources. So this is something to keep in mind. This is how you generally survive their damage. The other point in surviving their damage is always having at least one stun break. So if they CC you with uh, something like the Great Sword 5, you able to disengage from this uh, control or the ball towards them from something like lightning reflex or even simply seeing them back with something like a glyph of equality so you have a way to uh, to survive the cc and more even importantly is surviving the immobilize or something like lightning reflex or any cleanse that you have and simply leave out of their damage hopefully with a dodge to avoid all the damage that's coming toward you now, Immobilize is even more dangerous than um, CC because 
immobilize can stack with CC, so uh, and it doesn't overwrite. So you can only have one uh, CC skill on you uh, on a time, given time. So anytime someone CC you, it's overwrite the old one. But immobilize can keep stack with other conditions, and you can cleanse multiple conditions, and you still have the immobilize on you, so you can really get stuck, which means you have to have really some ready condition cleanse. Sunset like lightning reflexes is your best bet because it will always remove the immobilize no matter what condition you have or what situation and it's also some break and a dodge so it's like the save me button for some ranger and different builds different classes will have different tools in general now that for the general rules for survivability now let's talk about boons which a point of survivability and also point of aggression they have very dangerous boons which is the most annoying for us is stability resistance and ages might will give them more damage, but we can, uh, in a way, survive the damage and deal with it and avoid it. However, Aegis will avoid our hits, which means they survive our CC, they survive our damage and everything. Stability, they can survive the CC and ignore us completely, so to the point we can't trade bunches with them. Again, with the resistance, being able to walk out of your immobilize or ignore it completely, meaning even some of your damage will be lost, like no pulses from the black hole effect and no pulses from the entangle skill for example or even the signet of uh, the wild if the, it land on them so you always need to pay attention to their boons ages can be moved with a single attack so it will not give you much of a problem there is builds that very strong and can keep stacking multiple sources of block however it's not the most dangerous stability is probably the worst scenario because you have a lot of it comparing even to the resistance most of those boons luckily happen with the f3 skip if you're playing against a condition build, you can mostly cleanse a condition and play around it easier. Power builds or celestials that still utilize power are the most dangerous, which means they are mostly melee unless you use a tool like the longbow, which make it again different way of avoiding it. You have to pay attention to the obvious animations, but at least they're not oppressing you very closely, so you can deal with it a bit. You have projectile reflection. Um, always have tools like that in your build, whatever you play, projectile reflection, blocks, stuff like that in the rooming build in general, this is just a general advice. And for our droid, we have sources for that. So, generally, it's a melee style, which means try to always get them out of their F3 uh, to order to fight, pay attention when the stability is moved, or it's gone, uh, over the, uh, like the cooldown is gone, and then immediately you start CC chains them. This is also help you to survive, because if you fight inside the F3 of uh, Willbender, you cannot survive the damage. He will have multiple boons, you will miss multiple of your hits, and you have stability cannot be CC'd while he's able to cast mostly on you. So try to avoid this. Now, after that, there is many tricks also you can bowl, like the normal CC chain, which I explain in the um, how to fight video, and also I have a dedicated video in how to survive, with multiple other advices that can help you with that. Um, like, for example, for Willbender, you can avoid the blind from boarding if you CC after the board immediately. So they teleport on you, they stuck right in front of you, and you can immobilize them with skills like Signet of the Wild, but the blind land only after the teleportation so if you time the cc well you will completely avoid the blind so you don't have to waste another skill simply uh, removing uh, their uh, blind and start doing your own uh, aggressive skills and there's multiple uh, tricks like this you can bowl so for example interrupting their healing can really mess up with uh, their the way they survive like uh, uh, even uh, immobilize through their uh, block if you use a block skill or for healing and use entangle you can go through the block with unblockable and you can keep them in place there is also other tricks like standing on top of your roots so when they teleport it will start immobilizing they get stuck inside of it as, and they can teleport out if you keep your bit next to you there's nothing around you he can't use a teleporting skill to get out of your roots unless there is another mobs around you which is not always the case. So there's multiple advanced tricks you can work on later and discover yourself even and do your own plans. But this is the easiest way to script a fight against a Willbender. Now we move to fights when I give you examples on against Willbenders. Uh, a bit clear uh, version of this uh, idea of board, board again and what I do against them. So this we engage like 2v2 against two Willbenders and I simply keep my distance a bit seeing who, one, who would attack me who would not. I'm able to trade bunches, like I'm tanking a little bit through healing, through blinding them, and then again, another distance, I get out of uh, this F skill, but they are not aggressive on me, I keep my distance once they board again, 
they mostly was focusing on uh, my ally here so I'm trying to stay close to them while still avoiding the damage and we simply over press them a lot and they don't have enough survivability to survive this we engage the other wheelbender while he trying to disengage uh, he gave us a stability I'm trying to catch him in place with more immobilized this is an easy form of fighting and once they don't have stability there's not much they can do when you actually see them one after another now we get engaged with other players and another wheelbender and a did I so this fight is a bit tricky wheelbender will always survive as long as he still have uh, his, his skills like he have to go through the rotation you can't finish a fight against him simply by one shutting him unless you like he didn't see it coming but he have invulnerability he have multiple age sources so you know the fight will take time this is also something i forgot to mention at the start of the video but most if not all guardian uh, builds always will have to go to the sequence they use their f skills they use invulnerability since their f skills again always predict that this will happen you will not be able to finish the fight earlier the fight will have to go to the, through this motion which means is stop wasting too much resources before you actually able to finish the fight now they engage on me both of them on the dead eye i get cc'd i disengage i dodge and again dodge just bam of dodge because i want to avoid having immobilized it will take too much to cleanse i don't have instant cleanse uh, ready for me and I'm trying to go to the water and I know I'm able to create this distance because there was more resources and I was able to do it. They will not fall on the water and I will get up and engage only the wheelbender in a couple of uh, duels. And we will able to see exactly what I'm talking about on them. So the wheelbender engage me and this first fight will play very aggressively. So watch, he use F3, I dodge, he use another teleport, I dodge. He caught me with the immobilize, so I disengage or, or using light reflex with the dodge and dodge again. Now there is not much resources left, he kept using everything and I'm able to trade bunches with now healing with some blind, putting in a huge amount of condition, trying to lock him down, staying close to my route, but luckily he, or for him he didn't get immobilized, and again trying to tank some of his damage while applying my own condition. With not much uh, pressure enough that he can do, I was able to completely finish this fight easily. So every time he used a board, I was ready with another multi source of defense, again and again, one by one, like that. In the second fight, he will try to adapt to this, he will not play this aggressively. He will try to use like couple of dodges, save his tools, trying to let me waste my time and then completely lock me down. As you can see, he engaged with F3 to give himself the boon. I use hunker down to tank a little bit and start healing and I'm still trying to pressure from distance I'm not gonna engage closely to him stability is removed so I CC chain CC with my bet mobilize another skill and short bow and the glyph equality go through his block with my entangle putting huge amount of condition while he can survive it there's no time for him even to cleanse and the fight is over I didn't even interrupt his casting immediately so this idea didn't help him much because I kept my tool as he kept his, I didn't waste what I had. In the last fight he will try to play aggressively again in a way, but we will go with the same method. So he engages but with F3 this time, trying to use a blind and save the boons when he really needs them and he finally uses them again. I leave the F3 as I told you, I'm not trying to treat bunches here and resustain myself and my bet and now CC chain him, no boons and another CC and another CC, no time for him to do much and I can handle the little bit of damage that he can apply now and he couldn't cleanse all that and the fight was over very easily fight like this you can read quite easily obviously not every fight with Willbender will be this easy or clear most Willbender will not simply follow in sequence with their skills they will try to measure the fight first and save things and create space between their skills until the skill reset and they will go for another this is another example of a fight with a wheelbender that will go in the same idea like trying to give you the easy stuff uh, to see how it work you get out from the f3 i'm trying to dodge in like now i'm sustain myself because i didn't i don't want him to come for my catapult so i'm trying to pressure even so uh, the fight is uh, is not this clearly uh, easy to finish i even didn't care for stability and burst even through it because it didn't matter it seemed to me like it didn't matter he he can't really focus on survivability enough he's going through his skills now let's watch an example on a difficult fight against well benders 
So in this, it started with a, like a group versus a group kind of fight, the defending or fighting over a camp. So I'm trying to avoid the cleave or wellbenders and even there's a mesmers. So I keep in my distance, I keep in line of sight if I need to. I'm trying to lock the easier target first. So I go for the Bower Mirage, obviously, very heavy breacher while uh, being very easy to kill compared to a wellbender, clearly. I switch for the Harbinger since I can't keep track for the uh, Mirage where it's gone. My game uh, got lagged uh, a little bit, like it got freeze for a moment. And now I realize this fight is, is like over. They killed all my allies. I'm the only one alive. So I'm trying to disengage. This is another point of surviving uh, a Willbender. They have better mobility than yours. So you have to change this. You have to make your mobility better. And how you do that? Through immobilizing and seeing them, completely locking them back of you while they're trying uh, to catch you. So this mobility become relevant because they keep getting immobilized, which makes them waste other resources to simply cleanse. So chasing you become a problem even so you don't have even half their mobility in a way. So I'm being chased by two wheelbenders, a harbinger and a bar mirage. And this is crazy. All of them bar players, not even condition players in a way. And I get finally stuck with uh, taking an immobilize. I change direction, stealth, try to kite again. But there's too much mobility and too little immobilized to catch everyone, even ages, resistance. So what I'm doing uh, doesn't really work. I get CC'd and bursted by them immediately and die. But look how much distance I were able to cut and I was already in cooldown within the fight. This is a very difficult situation that you, I wanted you to see an example of survivability. You need to use your tools, immobilize CC in order to take the enemy away from you. Create a situation when you can kite an enemy that move better than you. And this fight we will engage them again but um, I will not be this outnumbered so I will be able to put up a really decent fight against this wheelbender and uh, whoever come with him. So uh, he caught me off guard like I didn't see him coming so I had to create some serious distance and now they are taking my ally. I catch them both immediately with um, my entangle. I try to cleave them both and focus on the easy target first which obviously is a harbinger. Harbinger doesn't have much defenses it's all about few boons and you can simply lock them down very easily comparing to a wheelbender and move to the wheelbender now now we are 2v1 so I saw this fight like we had it in the box it's it's very easily uh, it will end but the damage is just too much and my friend couldn't handle it so I will not be even able to revive him I will try to do enough cleaving do the blind to the hits don't land but I don't have defenses to secure this uh, revive and I was trying to keep him alive I could focus simply on trying to kill the wheelbender but that mean my ally will die so I'm me trying to be a good ally I would actually trying to uh, revive him but it every try was a failure can't deal with this much damage from wheelbender and as you can see dodge remove the immobilize dodge again he have no stability so trying to cc chain him call my bit next to me in order if it have a cc on not on cooldown it will use it but we try we end up keep moving it like that so every time he move i try to create more distance and even if i don't have a way to create distance i try to cc him so he doesn't land the hits even entering sisters of avatar will do a daze around you I got caught to the immobilize, so I switch uh, my weapon and start healing, trying to tank his hits. He's not really heavy on damage, not like the uh, guys from uh, the first video, for example. So I can tank his damage a little bit, but also he have more survivability uh, than most other builds and too many boons. But I can tank a bit. I keep my health uh, a bit high and I keep damaging when I need. I was a bit late on uh, moving uh, my bit there, but uh, I was still able to pull it. I heal immediately, removing the immobilize and other uh, condition, but I have an ally, so we can really lock him down and the fight was over. In a fight like this, it could go on and on. Both of us can keep ourselves alive. If he really play his build to the maximum ability, I will not be able to actually kill him and he won't be able to actually kill me. We both can keep consistent movement and cleanse and healing. So that's it for the video, uh, this are all the advices I could give you about fighting uh, Willbender. I hope you found this video helpful, like, share and subscribe for more videos like this and watch this video more than once if you need, uh, if you want those points and want to keep them in mind and um, like train for them, keep this video on your playlist or whatever and watch it even multiple times or get back to it if you need it. There will be a batch in uh, October 8th, like a couple of days from now. 
hopefully we will all like it it will change few things but will bender will still the same and most of those advices will not change even with balance change because will bender work like this mechanically so um, it doesn't matter if they're strong or not maybe you're gonna need this much survivability or this much damage or maybe you don't but the way it work it will be the same unless some significant change actually happened i will leave you with a couple fights now i hope you like this video leave comments or any other questions or any other advices you want to share and I'll be seeing you next time. Peace. Never overcome the spirits burning pride that we shielded from the hunts. The lost mother tongue never spoken in the light will echo in the ears tonight. For now, the last cry of battle has returned to the place, and the clan fires are burning in the highlands again. A fight to the flag of freedom flies overhead, and the evil eye of tyranny is dead. Red.